Hello, cheap skaters, and thank you for joining me tonight. Welcome to our show. Now, I'm Kath Armstrong from the Cheap Skates Club, and we're trying a whole lot of new stuff with our videos. Some of you joined us last week for a different way of live streaming, and some of it, some of you joined me to help me test some other things. Tonight, I'm trying a YouTube premiere. Now, I've never done one before. You know that I'm technologically incompetent. So please bear with me. But I thought the YouTube premieres are so much fun because I can record it ahead and then join you in chat when it actually um, screens, shows. So let's get started. If you are watching tonight, it's Tuesday the 2nd of March 2021 and this, as I said, is our first YouTube premiere. Now I'm really looking forward to joining you in the chat. You'll know it's me because you can't not know it's me, you'll just know it's me by my comments. Best thing about a premiere is you don't need to wait until the end of the show for me to answer your questions. I can do it while the show, while you're watching the show. You have a question, ask it because I can chat live with you in real time. That's pretty exciting, I think, anyway. And it's much better than watching me go hmm, with my glasses and try and see what's going on because even with the new glasses, I still have to. Hmm. Right. So, same as always, if you have a question, please put it in. Um, all capitals, all uppercase, so that it stands out and I can see it because I'm on my own tonight too. Hannah had something else to do. So you've just got me. Sorry, folks. And hopefully I'll see your question when you ask it and I'll be able to answer it straight away too. Now, the chat still flies by, so... You know, I'd hate to miss a question, so please, please make sure that it's in all uppercase. Now, enough of the housekeeping, blah, blah, blah. Let's get started with tonight's premiere. It's, a, it's an interesting topic because when you're food shopping for the week, or for the fortnight, or for the month, however you do it, a lot of thought goes into our selections, you know, what we buy and what we don't buy. Yet a lot of us give very little thought about just how much of what we buy and prepare goes in the bin, or the compost heap, or the worm farm, or the bakashi bucket. On average, in Australia, we throw away approximately one-third of the food we buy each week. That's one-third of your grocery budget going into the rubbish bin or the compost or the worm farm or the bakashi bucket or whatever you do with it. So if you're on the $300 a month food challenge, you spend $75 a week on food, then you're putting roughly $25 in the bin every single week. That's $1,300 a year. Now, you wouldn't take $25 cash each week and toss it in the bin. And you wouldn't take $1,300 out of the bank once a year and toss it in the bin. So why would you toss the equivalent in food? We need to reduce our food waste individually and as a nation. And I have eight easy ways you can do this. Yes, eight. And they are easy. We need to do it to keep more money in our pockets. We need to do it to stop filling landfill with rotting food that creates methane or something or other. Methane it is, I'm pretty sure. And, you know, ruins our air. Now, eight easy things. And if they weren't easy, I wouldn't be doing them. Because remember, I like to keep things simple so that they work. Not complicated, not overwhelming because then they're just too hard and we don't do them. We just give up. So the number one easiest way to not put food and so your money in the bin is to simply freeze unused food and leftovers. 
if you've got leftovers, wait to have that second helping because you might find that you're not as hungry as you thought you were. But also remember portion control. I know I harp about portion control, but if the recipe says serve six, make sure you get at least six serves from it and freeze the spare serve or serves. Now, I like to do them in single portions. It's just easier for our family. You may choose another way. But if you freeze what you have left over, even if it is just one serving, that's a free meal. The other thing is freeze them in microwavable or oven-proof containers so you can just take them and heat them and you can take them to work for lunches and that means you can stop buying lunch. There goes $10 a day, $50 a week. And when you freeze meals, make sure you plan one or two mufty meals a month to use up your freezer stash. Now, in our house, we tend to have these types of meals over the weekend everyone just sort of helps themselves to whatever they fancy. Now, you know, if you've um, followed my menu plan for a while, you'll often see, you know, Saturday, Friday and Saturday are sort of hmm, weird meals. They might say tacos or hamburgers or toasted sandwiches and soup or whatever. That's so that I have something easy on the meal plan in case there are no freezer meals. Most of the time we have at least once a month we've got enough in the freezer to freeze us all. But when you're freezing, don't forget to freeze leftover gravy or cheese sauce. Um, if you've got stock or broth left over, freeze it. Um, tomato sauce or passata or tomato paste can all be frozen. Fruit juices can be frozen. All those little things add up. And you'll be amazed at how much food waste you can avoid producing if you save them and use them. Now, number two way to... Um, reduce your food waste is to evaluate what's in your rubbish look at what you're throwing away if you're throwing away half of what you buy then buy smaller portions or think about purchasing airtight containers or excuse me or a vacuum sealer or even fresh and crisp bags just so that You've got something to store that food in for long term or longer term so it stays fresh. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, fresh and crisp bags, and I harp on about these a lot too because I love them, they keep vegetables fresh for so much longer and they're an inexpensive option for long term food storage. Best of all, they're reusable. I wash them and I dry them and I reuse them literally until they fall apart. Now, I tend to open a new box once a year or so and then when a bag starts to fall apart, it goes into the bin and I just get a new one out. So they cost about under $4 now, a packet. Brilliant. The other thing are Tupperware type containers and they're great for the fridge, for the freezer and in the pantry. And because they're airtight, they keep food at its best for that much longer. Store your food properly so it stays fresh and it stays usable for as long as possible. You don't want to be throwing out and throwing out money. And that leads me to my third point, keeping the fridge organised. Now, if you were to come into our home and open our fridge, you would think it was a jumbled mess and you would wonder at how I can stand to have it like that, but how I can even find anything in it. It's really simple. It's, it's organised and I know I can put my hand on the eggs, I can put my hand on butter, I can put my hand on the cheese, I know the vegetables where they are, any leftovers or um, cooker head meals are where I put them, I can just reach in and grab them. So while it looks crazy, it's actually quite organised and that's really important because keeping your fridge organised stops you from forgetting what you have in it stops you from forgetting ingredients, ready-made meals, leftovers, and having them spoil and then having to go into the bin. So keep moving things around so that you'll always be able to keep an eye on what you have and its condition. The other thing that helps, and if you look in my fridge, you'll probably see them, clear containers. They are so handy to have in fridges, whether it's clear plastic or clear glass, Pyrex, whatever you use, jars, bottles doesn't matter 
But when you can see into a container, you can see exactly what you have. So you know you've got a couple of portions of potato salad, a little bit of cooked chicken to be used up. And that means you'll use them. They won't be left until they grow fur and need to be composted or binned or sent to CSIRO for an experiment. And the other thing, and this is number four, is temperature. It's along with keeping your food fresh is temperature. Keep your fridge cold. Now, you might be going, no, 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 it'll run longer and cost me more. Hmm. Well, work out, you know, $25 a week of food in the bin as opposed to five or six dollars a year for turning your fridge up. Weigh it up, folks. You might think it will run longer and more often, and it might. But if you keep it full, and you know, there's the old, you know, the old water in the milk bottle in the freezer trick, well, that works for fridges as well as it does for freezers. If you keep it cool, it will stay cold. It will stay cold longer, and so it won't be running longer. Oh, and keep the door closed. Keep the door closed. Teach people to open, grab, shut. Seriously, folks, fridge doors are huge, and they open up a big space that fills very, very quickly with room temperature air as soon as the door is opened. Keep the door closed. Now, our fridge beeps if the door is left open. And quite frankly, that annoys me to pieces, although it's not often. What I really wish was that the freezer door beeped if it was left open. It doesn't because there's more money in the freezer than in the fridge. And I would be really upset if I lost a freezer full of food because the door was left open. Just saying. So I've done some research. The ideal temperature for fridges in Australia, about three degrees Celsius. Most fridges tend to be set much warmer. And the thing is, we all know, or we should, that heat and moisture encourage decomposition. And that's pretty much what happens when the food in the fridge goes off. It starts to decompose. So check the temperature. And make sure it's cold enough. Turn it down. Turn it down. Turn it down. Simple. Now the basics are covered. And number five is meal planning. Don't groan. Don't groan. Just plan your meals. It doesn't have to be complicated. Remember, if it's simple and easy, you'll do it. Make it all complicated and detailed and it will become overwhelming and you'll give up. And you'll be wasting food and time and money. So I suggest you start small. Make a meal plan for the week. Just do your dinners. Do an inventory of your pantry to see what you have. Now, again, that sounds much harder than it is. Just take a look and jot down what you have to use up. Inventory done. Easy. Not complicated. Not overwhelming. Doesn't take hours. And you'll be surprised at how many recipes share the same ingredients. So when you're meal planning, plan to cook for three or four days and make recipes with those ingredients and then plan three or four nights to use up the leftovers. They can be mufti meals from point one above or whatever. And I'd say, you know, that gives you one or two nights off where you might want to dine out or go out with friends or have takeaway or whatever. Um, you might. We don't eat out other than a very special occasion. We are cheapskaters after all. And frankly, I think home cooked is often nicer and much better value, even if it's my cooking. But I'm just saying, you plan your meals to suit you and your family and your lifestyle, not me and mine. Work it out to suit you. Now, number six might be a bit controversial. Might be. Rethink buying in bulk. Consumers buy in bulk to save money, but what they fail to realise is that if they buy more perishable goods than they could need and throw away rotten or unused food, they might as well just be throwing money straight in the bin. So this is 
this is one of the things that bugs me about Costco. Have you, have you seen the size of the containers of the salad greens that they sell? Even my family, five, if we ate salad every day, we would struggle to get through one of those containers, those giant tubs of salad greens, before they started to wilt and go slimy. That's money in the bin. Ditto the huge tubs of salads and um, dips and all those sorts of things. They are huge. So if you, uh, no doubt they are cheap, but they are huge. And if you're going to throw them out, then they're not cheap. They're costing you money. So if you must buy in bulk, try to find someone to share it with if you think it's going to go off before you can use it, as in the salad greens or the salads, the dips, whatever. Or think ahead and portion out the meats and the veggies and um, things that you buy and freeze them or vacuum seal them. You can freeze so many things, like herbs freeze really well. Bread, meat, chicken, fish, veggies can all be frozen. Cakes, biscuits, croissants, muffins, whatever, can all be frozen. So you're not going to waste anything just remember to use them once they're in the freezer because if it's not being eaten, it's still money wasted. Now, point seven might make some hearts sing, not mine, but some hearts sing, and it sort of kind of goes against what I do. Actually, it does go against what I do and pretty much what I suggest. But if you are struggling with food waste, then I suggest you shop more often, at least for the perishables. I know, I know, in this instance, it's going to be a case of do as I suggest and not as I do. So let me explain. If you do all your shopping for the week at once, fruits and veggies that you buy for a particular meal, because you've meal planned, remember, might go bad before you can use them. Hmm. So instead, you can either put those meals at the beginning of the week so that you don't waste them, or you can, if they're at the end of the week, divide your shopping list and just do a couple of small trips to pick up the perishables. That way, your food is always nice and fresh. Now, I have a couple of caveats on this. First, if you follow my shopping plan, then you know that you use the foods that will be that will go off fastest first, like I just said. You put them towards the beginning of the week. And again, if you follow my shopping plan, you'll know how to store what you buy to make it, to make it last mm, at least two weeks, if not longer, depending on what it is. The other caveat is if you struggle with sticking to the list, then this shopping more often idea isn't for you. It won't work. If you are, a, I'm just going to go and get a bottle of milk and come out with $50 of stuff type of person, then shopping more often is not going to work. It just won't work for you. On the other hand, if you can stick to your list, go for it. It'll be done and see how it works. Now, I have done in the past, if we go back, I'll put, I'll link it down below, um, a video on how I store my fruits and veg so that it will last longer. It's really simple, folks. It's not difficult. And I can shop for a month and make that fruit and vegetable, those fruit and veggies last. It's just in the way you shop, what you buy, how you use it or when you use it and how you store it. And food storage, correct food storage in the fridge for those things is vital. All right, now lastly, number eight is something we cheap skaters are very good at, having a backup plan. I suggest that you always have a backup recipe in mind. You might have something on the food, on the meal plan and it doesn't work out. So you know, 
if you have a backup plan, you don't miss an opportunity to use your ingredients before they go off. Simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. Um, and again, we've talked about this before. So we, we all sort of know that, and I mentioned it earlier, that most recipes, most of our recipes, use the same basic ingredients. It's the accessory type ingredients like the herbs and the spices and some of the more exotic perhaps um, vegetables or fruits that change them and the way those ingredients are combined and prepared that turn them into different meals. Otherwise, they're all pretty much the same, meat, seasonings, veggies. So keep a few backup recipes in mind. Perhaps just drop them at the bottom of your meal plan in case things change. Now, for instance, things changed in our house last night. Um, I had meatloaf on the meal plan, but I had a really busy day. I was on the phone for hours yesterday and I didn't get around to making it. I didn't even get around to taking the mince out of the freezer. So I looked in the fridge and I had a small portion of noodles, not enough for all of us. And then there was a little bit of cooked chicken. Again, not enough for all of us. I had um, a single piece of broccoli, not enough for all of us on its own. And then there was about a tablespoon of sour cream in the container that needed to be used up. <sighs> and I had to feed five of us and everyone was hungry and it was getting late. So I shredded the chicken, chopped the broccoli and put it in the microwave to steam cook the noodles and when the noodles were cooked I added the chicken and the broccoli and I grabbed some frozen peas corn and carrots my good old frozen standby veg from the freezer and tipped those in I stirred in a jar of my um, moo cream of chicken soup and the tablespoon of sour cream a sprinkle of garlic powder warmed it all through it was so good everyone ate it and everyone liked it now, not only did it stop us from getting takeaway, save $30, but it used up the bits in the fridge and was basically a free meal because the cost of the ingredients, such as the chicken and the noodles and the broccoli, were already covered by the meals that they'd been bought for. Free food is good, folks. Can't knock free food and free meals. So... There are eight easy ways to reduce food waste and keep more money in your purse. Not difficult to do. Something that we all probably want to do more of and could use more money in our purse. Who couldn't use more money in their purse? But when you think about it, you're not going to take $25 out of your purse and put it in the bin every week. You're not going to take $1,300 out of the bank once a year and just drop it in the rubbish bin or the compost or the worm farm or whatever and you wouldn't because it's plastic, so don't. You wouldn't do that. You have better things to do with your money. So eight simple things will save you a small fortune because that $1,300 a year is if you're on the $75 a week meal plan. If you're doing... Uh, if your grocery bills on average $100 a week, you'll be saving or not putting around $1,700, a bit over $1,716 a year you won't be putting into the rubbish bin. Think about it. Because you have to work to earn that money. You spend the time to go shopping. You've got petrol and wear and tear on your car. You bring it home and you put it into the fridge and you've got the power that you use for your fridge to keep it long enough to go off before you toss it. So it's a lot more, in actual fact, the cost is a lot more than the $25 or whatever. It's a lot of money that, that you don't need to waste and it's just wasted. So even if you just... Um, Start using one or two of them, the meal planning and food storage, keeping them straight. That will save you a bucket load, of, well, a bucket load of time and a bucket load of money. And who wouldn't love a bucket of money 
the end of each year. If someone gave you a bucket of money, wouldn't you be happy? I would be. All righty. So thank you for joining me on our first premiere. If you liked our show, please give us a thumbs up. The thumbs up help our rankings with YouTube. Just makes it easier for people to find us and keeps us, I don't know, growing. And that's what we want to do. And if you know someone who might like this show or who might benefit from my eight easy ways to stop food waste or who might like to know more about the Cheapskates Club, please use the share button to send them the link. I'll be back next Tuesday, same time with another live show next week and I hope you can join us again. I've enjoyed chatting to you over in the live in the chat. Have a great week everyone and good night.